this because it's funny. It's so contradictory to what... Listen, I've been thinking about faith this way for a long time. Um, but even when I, I read this, it causes my brain to... What? What? How can that be? What? We're just going to read this real quick. This is one of the meanings of the word faith, which we all define as us believing. Which there we do believe. Okay? So please understand what I'm saying. This is one of the definitions of the Greek word for faith. Listen carefully. The character of one who can be relied on. Someone who's faithful. You're struggling now to believe that that fits with the definition of faith. The character of one who can be relied on. We all think of faith as what we do. Right. Yeah. When you look at the root word for faith, it means to come and make someone your friend. It means to win the favor of another. It means to come and win the favor of another. To come and make someone who isn't your friend, your friend. And the way that you would do that is by revealing that your character can be relied upon. Right? Who do we call our friends in the world? The people that we think we can rely on. Sure. They've demonstrated goodness towards us right. in some way. Right. Haven't they? I mean, I call you guys my friends because you guys are good to me. I see that you care about my life. When I go out in the world, when I go into other countries, I think of how you guys care for my life, how you've supported me, you've encouraged me, you've cried with me, you've laughed with me, you've loved with me. When I think about you guys, I call you my friends because your character has won me over, right? You've won my favor. And so faith came in the person of Jesus. It's a thing. The word faith is a noun. Right. Person, place, or thing. So, the goodness of God towards sinners came in Jesus in order to persuade us of God's goodness towards us, even when we're dead in sin. And then that brings up forth something in us where we say, that guy's our friend. That guy, we can rely on that guy's <laughs> character towards us. Right. Because even when we're falling short, he's still good to us. Even when we didn't get it right, he's still good to us. So we find ourselves resting in his equitable deed and character towards us that we saw made flesh in Jesus. Right. And that's what faith is. And so faith is something that happens to you. It's not something you do. Right? Right. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. The character of one who can be relied upon. The character of one that can be relied on. I'm going to read the rest of it right now, too. That's, that part just stuck out. When I read that in, um, in Switzerland, they were like, what? The character of one that can be relied on. But it, it's a powerful thing. It is a, remember, it's a noun. Right. Okay? It's a persuasion. It's a truth. It can be defined as the conviction of the truth of anything. It can be defined as the character of one who can be re relied upon. It comes from a root word that means to persuade, to induce one by words to believe something, to make friends of, to win one's favor, gain one's goodwill, or to seek to win one. It means to tranquilize another. Really? To tranquilize <coughs> another person. So, if you're full of anxiety, you can take a tranquilizer. If you don't sleep at night, if you're like in shock and you're freaking out in the house, they could give you something to tranquilize you. That's one of the meanings of the root word of faith, to tranquilize another person. Not, so, by, not by drugs, but by causing you to be tranquil. By, hearing, by seeing the heart of God. Sure. So we Boom. were That's right. filled right. with fear right. and anxiety. Right. Because we didn't know the heart of God. Right. We thought what made God righteous is that he must punish sinners. So we're filled with fear and anxiety, thinking we got to clean ourselves up from our sin, lest God come and punish us. Just like Adam, right. trying to clothe himself. Right. So faith came in the person of Jesus. And faith stood there in the person of Jesus to tranquilize our hearts by revealing the goodness of God. That when he found us receiving punishment from sin, he come and took our punishment into himself rather than let us be punished. Yeah. That tranquilized our hearts. 
Yes. Because we saw, oh, this guy is the savior, not the punisher. This guy's the justifier, not the condemner. This guy's the advocate, not the accuser. Oh. Caused us oh, to rest. Oh, okay. It tranquilized our hearts. This is the definition of faith. Mm-hmm. And so we define faith as something we do instead of something that happens to us. Right. So just like we would say grace is a person, yeah. faith is a person. Faith came. It came to do something to us. It came to tranquilize our hearts from the fear and anxiety we felt by revealing God can only be good to sinners. We were sinners. That will make you rejoice. (laughs) Oh, and then you'll you'll feel tranquil in the heart and you'll call out to God, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You'll find trust in your heart born towards God when you see this guy can only be good to me, right? And that, re- remove the fear and replace it with love. What did John say? Perfect love casts out fear. Love perfected in the heart of a human will remove fear. Whose love? God's love. What did you hear in his love? That you love God? No. That God loves you. You, you want, even we think about loving God. We even think how we're going to show God we love him. Do you know how you show God you love him? By resting in his love for you. Just by believing that he loves you. I'm just going to be honest. Do you know how my wife can show me love? By believing that I love her. Do you know what frustrates me more than anything with my wife? Is if she doesn't believe that I love her. Right? And I don't mean frustrated with her like, what's wrong with you? I mean frustrate me in the situation. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? A man personality receives love by the person he's loving, believing that he loves them. Yes. That's when he gets a smile on his face. Because he's all the time doing things to love the people. Right. And what makes him happy is when the people receive the love. Right. And so father isn't male like we think of a sex, but there's a father, male personality to God. You know what makes God happier than anything? When the people he's busy loving sees that he loves them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's when he feels loved. <laughs> You don't show God you love him by what you do for God, man. Come on. We're talking about the guy who created the freaking universe. You think he needs you to do something for him? (laughs) Seriously. I mean, how weak is the God we've created? He's so fragile that he's offended by our behavior. Fragile and dumb. I mean, yeah, he's like the most insecure dude there (laughs) ever was. Right? I mean, even if we say his name and don't finish it up with a prayer, he's offended. (laughs) <laughs> oh, remember, we can't say his name. Either. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, right. I mean, we've, we've got this view of God that if we really sat and talked about it, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So here in his love, not even that you're going to love God back in the sense that we think of love. The way you love God back is by saying he loves me. He really loves me. Yeah. That makes God feel loved back. Right? Because his will is that you experience his love. And now he's poured himself out so you can experience his love. Mm-hmm. And the way he feels loved is when you experience it. Right. And then, ah, he gets real happy. Right? I mean, we say it all the time in mar- within marriages. The men receive love through respect. Mm-hmm. Right? They think they're esteemed. Because the men are always, the men are laboring, busy, 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 busy. They lose sight of sometimes what real love is. Right? But they feel love when people see that what they're doing is for the family, yeah. right? But if the people don't see, they don't feel love, right. right? And so God did everything for us. He poured himself out because he loves us. And the way he receives love back is when we say, Abba, you love me. You really love me. And then he gets happy. That's right. that's right. Man, that's so contrary to the current right? thinking. Oh, my goodness. And that, yeah. that actually, defi- and I'm going to talk about this on Sunday probably, but that actually defines what it means to be obedient. Obedience is to believe what God says. Simply put, is to allow yourself to be persuaded that God loves you with an everlasting love. That's obedience. That's obedience. Wow. It's to allow yourself to be persuaded that God has loved you with an everlasting love. Everlasting means without beginning or end. Perpetual. It can't begin or it can't stop. It's not interrupted by like a brief period of anger. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everlasting. With perpetuity. That's what it means. Right? right? Yeah. And that's what obedience would be. 
Jesus even said, even as I've obeyed the Father's commandment, I rested in his love. Yeah. Right? How was Jesus obedient? He rested in God's love for him. He believed God loves me. He really loves me. And he loves me so much, he doesn't see his future without me there. So even should I take the sin of the world upon myself and go into the grave, he won't suffer me to see corruption, neither will he leave my soul in hell. But he will come and he will raise me up. Right? Mm -hmm. That's how he was obedient. That's so contrary to how we think of obedience. Oh, he's bad. Right? It, it, it doesn't fit. And that's how the Father received love back from Jesus. That Jesus believed the Father loved him. Mm -hmm. That's how Jesus loved God back. That he, really he believed. That had to be his obedience. Yeah. Otherwise, why would he have done it? That's right. I mean, he had to feel that love for himself that would motivate him to go to that extent. He knew that he knew the end result of that. That's it. What we've done is looked on what can come forth from a person who believes God loves them, and we've defined that as obedience. Ah, yes. That's the fruit of obedience. That's not obedience itself. Okay? Big deal. Right? There's a big difference. Yeah. So we see what a guy will do who's actually at rest in God's love for him. And we define that as obedience. God didn't come and tell Jesus, you must love the world. And then Jesus did, so he was obedient. No, no, no. That's not what happened. Jesus didn't love the world by order or rule. That's not why he loved the world. Right? Do right? you see? Love came out of Jesus because he believe the father loved him he rested in the father's love for him and that caused like a chain reaction you know like a domino yeah you ever had a, like you said domino is a domino effect yeah. it's a domino effect jesus rested in the father's love for him he really believed god loves me that caused his flesh to rest the flesh can't bring forth love so when his flesh rested guess what come forth out of him love isn't it the cross that is the demonstration of god's love for the world yeah. Was Jesus resting on the cross? Yes. Why was he resting on the cross? He believed the Father loved him. Right. What came forth from that? He laid down his life for the world, loving them. Right. You see? Yep. Do you see how that works? Right. Listen, that's a big deal. Yep. Because if you define obedience as God tells you to do something and then you do it, it's speaking a subtle subconscious word to your heart that is going to keep you in a works mentality. It's going to keep you in a servant mentality. Mm -hmm. It's going to keep you seeing God as taskmaster or Pharaoh and you as the servant boy or girl. You as the slave boy or girl. It's going to keep you from seeing yourself as having equality with God and seeing all your conversation with God from the perspective of, let us. Yeah. Right? right? Because any conversation God had with <coughs> Jesus would be born from, let us. Yes. Equality. Bowing the head, not you must, right. right? There's a big difference to that, man. Yeah. Because if you think your relationship with God is like that, you're not really experiencing the love of God. You're experiencing something else, yeah. right? Yeah. Because in the day you say, well, obedience is he tells me to do this and I do it. Well, what happens if you don't do it then? Does God still love you? We'll shake our head yes, and it is true that he still loves us. But if that's our belief about God, we're not going to believe he's loving us right then when we, quote unquote, disobeyed. We're preparing for punishment. We're getting ready to be punished. We disobeyed God, therefore some bad thing's going to happen in our life. Yeah. Listen, God don't do, need to do anything for bad things to happen to people. Sin and death are in the earth. That's right. Bad things happen. That's right. Right? Yes. And even in the day a person believes or does something that's contrary to the truth, God doesn't need to come and punish them for that. Because the wages of believing lies is that that punishes us. When I believed the lie that I was too intense for people, God didn't have to come punish me. That lie was punishing me every day. Every day it was punishing me. Because every day I walked through the earth thinking, oh my gosh, did I, was I too much? Did I say too much? Was I too rude? Did I offend them? Did I hurt them? That's a cursed lie. I was already being punished. He didn't need to punish me. Does that make sense? Yeah. Never understand that dynamic? Yeah. God is not one with sin. They don't come and high five. <laughs> right? God's not like, oh, they sinned. 
all right, I'm going to come help bring the punishment, and then sin and God high five after. It's like we think God comes and piles on top of the punishment that sin's already bringing to us. No, man. That's ridiculous. Yes, it is. Like the Halloween story I told. When we went to the houses that gave horrible treats, we didn't go back. And we remembered the next year. <laughs> and we marked that house off the list. They give bad, they give bad treats. <coughs> Listen, and we were really bad kids. I was a really bad kid, so I hope people forgive me. But man, sometimes we would even roll their house because we didn't like their treats. Like our way of giving them the finger. Like the people in Revelation that think God's the one bringing the plague. It says they found no place for repentance, but they cursed God. Because they said God's the one doing it. Right? But you know what we did? The houses that we found that gave the good treats, we'd change masks and go back again and again and again and again. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's how it is with God. He's like rolling, a well. I, I thought rolling houses was just good wholesome fun. Not for the people that got to clean it up, man. It's not yeah, good if you don't have a high fun. schooler to go clean it up, it's not, it's, it's not fun. It, you, it used to be a bad thing. Now it's like a compliment. I mean, it is no, a compliment. No, no, yeah, yeah, for the yeah. kids in high yeah. school. Yeah. Listen, but my... It used my, to be a bad thing. For people that don't have kids and you roll their house real good, that's not a compliment. That's a nasty thing to go quit, especially in Louisiana with the dew. Especially when it rains. Yeah, you get the rain or the dew going on. It's like, uh, I just such a hard to eat. 